Good evening, gardeners. It is Wednesday, December 23rd, and today I'm going to beef up the hinged hoop house behind me because we have a severe cold front coming in on Christmas Day. Earlier in the year, I posted a video on how to build a hinged hoop house, which I will link to above. And in that video, I constructed this hinged hoop house behind me with the goal of growing warm weather plants like tomatoes, peppers, and basil all winter long. Now I live in zone 8A, and that means that we can see annual minimums as low as 10 to 15 degrees each year. So in order to grow frost sensitive plants in that hinged hoop house, it needs to provide at least 20 degrees of protection to keep it above freezing in there. Now, because I built this hinged hoop house back in early fall before we started seeing frosts or freezes, I have been able to monitor the temperatures inside with a wireless thermometer hooked up to my ambient weather weather station to try and gauge if there is sufficient protection in there. And when I built this hinged hoop house, I used simple incandescent miniature Christmas lights in order to provide a heat source. And what I found by tracking my data is that that was only providing about three to five degrees of protection when it would get cold outside. So that is not nearly enough protection. And in order to correct this, I went to the store and I bought C9 incandescent Christmas lights. They are very large and each strand generates about 175 watts of power. So I have two strands of the C9 lights at 175 watts a piece, plus two strands of incandescent miniature lights at 40 watts a piece. So in this hinged hoop house behind me, I have a total of 430 watts of power that is providing heat to the plants inside. Now on a very recent video, which I will also link to above, I tested how much protection I was getting inside my hinged hoop house with all of those lights. And I found that I was getting about 10 and a half degrees of protection inside. And that is not nearly enough if we get an annual minimum. I need at least 20 degrees of protection. So in order to combat that, I went out and I bought one more box of C9 lights. These are again, 175 watts a strand. So adding that to the existing strands, I should have 605 watts of heat power in there and that should add additional protection. So what we're going to do is we are going to install this strand of Christmas lights and we are also going to monitor our temperatures on this very cold freeze that is coming in. Now this is likely going to be the coldest temperatures that I've seen in this property in two years. Our forecast is 23 degrees Fahrenheit and because I live in a cold spot we can easily see below that. So 19 to 20 degrees is possible that I could see in my yard. And if that happens, I'm at least going to need 13 degrees of protection in here in order for my plants to survive. So currently inside my hinged hoop house, I have incandescent mini lights that are at ground level to try and keep the ground warm. And then I have my C9s that I have strung up here because I ran out of room uh, up on the actual canopy itself where all of the lights are. So what I've done is I've installed these ceiling hooks about every 18 inches on the frame because I want to run these additional strand lights uh, on these ceiling hooks. And I simply drilled them in. Uh, I pre-drilled each hole with a drill bit and then I hand tightened each of these hooks in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie wrap my additional box of incandescent lights to those to secure them and give as much uniform heat as possible inside this hinged hoop house. So I have all three of my C9 incandescent light strands that are up and they all look pretty good. Uh, one thing I did notice is that one of my mini light strands had gone out on half. So I'm going to have to repair this or replace it with one that is working. But this should give me considerably more cold protection. Again, I still have two days before this cold front comes to get some final preparations in order. So I'm going to replace my burnout mini light strands to maximize our protection. And here we are on Christmas night. We will probably get down to about 20 degrees Fahrenheit tonight. So it will really test my greenhouse. And I added all of the lights, like I said I would, to the bottom of this greenhouse. So there is a total of 500. 
265 watts of heat in here. So that's three strands of C9 lights, as well as one strand of 100 mini incandescent lights. And in order to best hold in the heat, uh, I also covered it in a tarp. So the tarp is draped over the top. It's actually two tarps because my hoop house is so long because I wanna try to hold in as much heat as humanly possible because it's going to get so very cold tonight. And as you can see, I also have my my avocado and my Owari Setsuma and my Meyer Lemon. They're also dressed up in their plant jackets with lights to keep them warm as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to track these temperatures all night and we will see just how well these measures keep the heat inside of the greenhouse. And hopefully all of my tender annuals will survive because if they can survive this, chances are my greenhouse is beefy enough to survive any annual minimum in zone eight. So right in front of you, you see my ambient weather WS2000 weather station interface. And you can see how things look right now, both outdoors and in my greenhouse. And it's currently 6.30 p.m., so the sun has set. So that's why there's not much of a difference in the temperatures because I don't have my greenhouse on right now. And by switching to charts and tables, I can actually see a daily breakdown logged every five minutes as to how both my greenhouse and the outdoor temperature performed so you can get a dichotomy. And I can actually uh, select the dates that I want to bring up the data. So that is exactly what I did. So my weather station allows me to export all of the data logged in five minute increments to a CSV file, which you can then open up in Microsoft Excel and you can compile the data into charts. So what I did was I took the time starting at 8 p.m. on December 26th and I logged that time every five minutes all the way until 11 a.m. on the 27th. And these two columns, you can clearly see uh, I have both the outdoor temps and the greenhouse temps that are logged together. And I put together this chart. And here you can see how the greenhouse in red performed versus the outdoor temperature in blue. And the first thing that you'll notice is out in my yard, because there's some light wind that happens overnight, you can see the temperature fluctuates between a few degrees. And you can see um, it's a very lumpy graph, whereas the greenhouse temperature, it's very smooth because there's no air circulation, so you don't get those big lifts and dives in temperature. And what we can clearly see here is a consistent 20 degree Fahrenheit protection in the greenhouse versus the uh, open air. So 32 degrees Fahrenheit is freezing. So here you can see from 8 p.m. the outdoor air was well below freezing, whereas the uh, greenhouse temperature, it never got close to freezing. So I also made sure to isolate the data from my weather station. And here you can see that the outdoor temperature, I reached an absolute minimum low of 22.5 degrees Fahrenheit at 6.06 .06 a.m whereas the greenhouse reached its coldest point at 7.17 a.m., which was 43.7 degrees. So here I had a 21.2 degree Fahrenheit advantage in the greenhouse with its coldest temperature. Now I'm in zone 8A, which means that I can see temperatures as low as 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit. So if I add that 21 degree advantage and I assume my coldest temperature that I'll see will be 10 Fahrenheit, that gets me almost exactly to 31 to 32 degrees. So the greenhouse as constituted will more than likely keep me above freezing all year, every year in my climate. And if I need another degree or two of protection, all I need to do is maybe throw in another little light strand or throw another tarp on top just to hold in some more added heat and I will easily be able to make up that difference. And here we are on January 22nd, and I can show you exactly how my greenhouse has been performing through all of the cold. Um, it is growing uh, my frost sensitive plants very well. In fact, you can actually clearly see that my tomatoes are beginning to flower in here. These are cherry tomatoes because they don't need um, quite the amount of heat to ripen as the other varieties. So I have lots of tomatoes growing in here. You can see I have basil, I have several determinate and dwarf tomatoes. Uh, I have dill, I have cilantro. Uh, here you can see pepper plants that are growing back here. Uh, they're all over the corners. Uh, I have onion greens that are growing. I'm going to transplant them soon into my beds because they are going to be yellow onions. I have a lemon tree in a pot. I have my overwintered cherry pepper that's absolutely kicking butt in here. 
uh, I have um, spinach and I have uh, some romaine growing in here. So overall, everything is growing very well. The greenhouse has been incredibly successful. So hopefully this video will be proof positive to you that using incandescent lights is really all that you need to heat your greenhouse. You can provide over 20 degrees of protection safely using this method. I like this a lot more than using some kind of heater because heaters are not really environmentally safe. Uh, these Christmas lights are designed for all weather conditions. They're UL listed. They're made to be rained on. They're made to install both indoors and outdoors on vegetation. So using these, I think it's a safer way of heating your greenhouse than some kind of heater. And for those of you out there that think that running these lights is somehow going to mess up the circadian rhythm and the life cycle of these plants, it's not going to. These lights are very low intensity. The plants barely even uh, notice that they're on. It's not going to mess up the life cycle of the plants. If that were the case, then you wouldn't be able to grow things in far northern and southern climates where it's light out 24 hours a day in the summer. And in reality, those high latitudes are where the prize-winning giant pumpkins and squash that you see grown in uh, contests all over the world are actually grown because they benefit from those really long days. And because you don't need them every single night, most of the nights the plants uh, cycle just fine in the dark. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in my garden, everything I use is linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. Thank you all again so much for watching, and we hope to see all of you again on the next video. Tonight you die, Mr. Whale.